Welcome back to another episode of a very basic space program. You find me in orbit around the Earth with Explorer 2, which looks just like Explorer 1. Yeah, I made a boo-boo in the previous episode. So, um, yeah, if you want to find out what that was, please join me. So yes, here we are in orbit with Explorer 2. You can see we've got the upper stage of the Javelin there still attached. I'm actually gonna detach this in a second, but I just wanted to show you the craft first of all, show you its mass, show you everything. And then um, let me just detach this. There we go. Oh, look, insufficient avionics, but why? Um, yeah, that obviously popped up the last time I did this and I was too busy f playing around with it to notice that it was actually there. Now. When I was building this, I um, I deactivated the avionics because I like to see what the electric charge usage is and things like that. And yeah, I forgot to turn it back on. So um, yeah, problematic, I think at the least. Um, and um, we won't even talk talk about anything. No, that's interesting. That electric charge is going down quickly. I suppose we're on the dark side. Right, what I want to do is, uh, can I actually, you know what, we'll actually shut that down. There we go, saves us some energy. Um, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna do the mission we should have done in the first place. I originally thought it was the uh, the RCS that was the problem. It was actually avionics, um, or more accurately, not just the avionics. Um, even if I'd have activated it, this tank at the bottom here is not actually full. I've actually, I made it and then I reduced the reduced the, uh, the, the sort of contents in it because I didn't know if this would have enough fuel to do our mission. Um, so I, I lightened that, that that top tank. If I fill this up, I think this avionics is not sufficient. And so, yep, at the moment it's fine. But on the launch pad, I also noticed before I think I started the video that I'd actually activated the pumps. And I normally, I have them turned off and I for fuel anyway, in case I do something like this. I'd had the electric ones turned off as well for, for the resource ones for some reason. I'm not entirely sure. I think it was one of the earlier uses of the craft or something. And I turned them on. And by turning on the, the resource pumps for the electricity, I also, for some reason, turned on the pumps for, um, I turned on the pumps for, for fuel and we filled that tank up. So even if I'd have activated the avionics, it would not have worked. I had this forward uh, thrust from the RCS here because primarily, um, yeah, the, the craft uh, the craft had a forward thrust even when it doesn't have avionics. Um, I'm, I'm not entirely sure why it stopped working. Um, we'll have to look into that, but um, yeah, it was interesting. So I'm going to uh, time warp this thing forward. We're going to get a bit of uh, electricity or something or whatever, get towards that node, which is where we are right now. We can get rid of this. We've got, we've got hours worth of electric supplies when we do stuff like that. We'll get onto the node. We'll do this burn. Thank you very much. And um, Look at this. So what I've actually got is I've got these these uh, RCS ports on the top actually active and um, they're going to do the orientation for us. They're nice and simple. We've got signal. I hope we're going to have signal for a while. Ooh, I need to get away from that. I've, I've set up a maneuver node already to go to the, to the moon. You've seen me do that before. So don't worry too much about that. I have a horrible feeling we're going to lose signal. Oh, ooh, have we got? I think this one is going to be Okay, is it? Yeah, we're gonna have a signal there. Beautiful. I think we're gonna have signal all the way. We don't have it at the moment, but we should reacquire it very soon. That should be pretty much, oh, it's around the corner. Right, that should be um, close to getting signal. If not, uh, not gonna be happy about that, but we'll see. We may have to go around again, which is not ideal with this craft, but uh, we will see. There's the uh, the upper stage. Let's time warp this a little bit. Do I want to time warp it a little bit? I don't know if I can actually start the engines without signal is the important thing. Um, I don't know. That would be uh, that would be an interesting one, wouldn't it? Um, well, we'll give it a go. We'll give it a go because t technically this craft should be able to orientate it and set, set itself off without a signal. I, I don't feel bad about doing that sort of potential cheaty cheaty. Ah, it is orientating itself. So smart ASS can actually do a bit of orientation control. Right, we've got about a little bit of time there. Now, what I will actually do is I'll start the engine before I start the engine, shall we say, to, to ullage this because, uh, is it ullage? Let's have a look. It's very stable at the moment. Okay, that's probably because we're spinning around slowly. Um, we're getting ready, so we're gonna start the RCS and start that engine. And there we go, on our way. We still don't technically have signal, but we'll let that go. 
Um, what have we got on this? Now, I need to remember, yeah, we've got a little bit of fuel left on that. This engine is going to restart a few times. It has the ability to restart. We're going to use this as basically our slowing down engine once we get to the sort of towards the moon's sphere of influence. So we need to remember that. We're going to use some of this RCS just to uh, to do some of the final sort of um, refining of our interaction. I want to, I want to make sure we're going to hit the, the moon, basically. And we're going to do a direct descent. I've got this on here so I can just see the mass and we can actually get rid of that now. It's not important. Um, so this thing weighs just under, I think it's just under five tons. So we can put over over about five tons or more than five tons into orbit with our new launch vehicle, which is very nice. I think I, I actually probably could have gone bigger with this um, given that launch vehicle, but uh, we will see. We will see what happens. So you can see we're going to use um, a big chunk of our Delta V heading out to the, oh, hello. Just get a good view in the engine there heading out to the uh, to the moon and when we get there we're going to use the rest of that to actually slow it down now the problem i have is we're potentially going to have boil off of liquid oxygen um so i don't know how much of that's going to be left because i've not done this for a while actually in rp1 because i've been playing the british series where we don't use liquid oxygen we use uh, hdp for absolutely everything and um although in reality that will actually catalyze itself uh, down or decompose in order of sort of time in the way that rp1 works it doesn't it isn't really a problem for us um so i'm not really used to sort of cryogenic fuels at the moment so this is an interesting one for me you can see there's our craft there very very pretty and we're coming up for our, our burn time now what i'm actually going to do is i'm actually going to toggle the map off and i'm going to um going to focus the view again on the moon so we can actually have a look um any encounter would be good I just need to be careful. Now, if I had time slowy downy stuff or something like that, that would be really useful right now um, because this is going to come in fast, I think. So we're going to go for now. Oh, now that's not bad. I could use a little bit more of a push because um, I'd really like to be sort of lined up with the earth on encounter so i think no i think that's going to good i think we're going to come down on the dark side because when we launch we're going to be in the dark no matter what because the moon's going to be over here somewhere when we actually encounter it so we're going to be in the dark when we land so that's not too bad so we'll just cancel that and i think that's what we're going to go with right so i'm now going to time warp this in the darkness <laughs> <clears throat> Hopefully we'll get some some light at some point. We're going to time up this in the darkness to our uh, our moon encounter, and I will see you uh, right back there. Right, so we are now in the sphere of influence of the moon, and we are approaching. So we've got about seventeen hours. We are facing the sun. We're going to get intermittent signal. I think is going to be a problem for us. We're going to get to about here, um, and then we're gonna we're gonna change the rotation of the craft a little bit. So we're gonna we're gonna speed up. I've got landing. You can see we get a signal there. I've got landing guidance on just so I can see when we're actually likely to land. Um, and I want to take this down to, um, I want to take it down probably to a few minutes away. We want to get to within a few minutes of landing. We're going to slew around probably about three minutes, four minutes of landing. Then we're going to slew around and then we'll we'll basically prepare ourselves for, for, um, for landing on the moon. And we're going to burn this first stage first get rid of all of that you can see our orbital speed is going up as we get closer we're going to accelerate closer and closer to the moon and um, of course that's going to be a problem because we've got to get rid of that speed as well so we're going to come down and then let's have a look uh, i want to keep going to about i want to go to maybe 10 minutes 10 minutes and then we can actually five how long is it going to take us to turn the craft round? that's the question i think i think four minutes i think four minutes to turn it's probably a good amount of time. Then we're going to fire those engines up and hopefully, hopefully it'll work. So we're going to go down to about four minutes. Right, there we go. Right. Oh, slow it down a bit too much. Right, we're going to surface negative, execute that. So now the craft is going to do that for us. Now, obviously, our signal is intermittent. I'm going to assume that we're allowed to do that, though. Right, it's going to slowly roll. I wish there was a bit of a quicker way of doing that. We're going to be landing in the dark. We're going to need to have this on. Right, we're down to three minutes. Right, signal still not brilliant. Okay, we now are going to have to apply some thrust. So what we're going to do is we're going to make sure this engine is actually shut down. That's shut down because we're going to need to activate that. 
as we get closer to the surface. This is the worst place to land for YouTube, isn't it? Look at that, there we go. So we're gonna get some solar power as we go down, but not much. This craft, remember, we need to make sure we've got this, activate that avionics. All right. <clears throat> so we're gonna ditch this stage as soon as it's used up, and then this stage will do the rest for us. So this is actually gonna to go to here. All right. Okie doke. So now it's just a waiting game, and I wanna wait until I get close enough to do this. So we're looking at probably being, I could be I could be less than 40 um, in reality because this is gonna have enough thrust to basically hold it. This final stage has about two minutes on it. So I can I can get pretty close and then and then be thinking. The concern is if you, if you do this too soon, you actually waste a lot of Delta V then falling for a long time before you can use your next stage. So we're gonna, we're gonna aim to maybe fire it at 30 seconds from impact at that speed, maybe. I, I, I could go for like, the, the traditional one I normally go for is half, but that's probably not a good idea. Um, we'll have a look. I think, uh, let's have, yeah, you've got the thruster weights huge on this engine. So I think, uh, I think probably, yeah, start up the thrusting, get that going and activate that engine. There we go. Right. There you go, we can see our burn time's going down. This is actually going up. We're actually slowing this down. So we could have actually gone, I think, probably later. Um, and there we go, wonderful. And we're actually going to um, have killed all of our orb orbital, I think, probably be at zero orbital. We've now got a minute minute to fall, which is, is problematic at best. So what we could actually do is, is kill this a little bit and then go again, which would be interesting, actually. I've not thought about doing a double, a double sort of landing here. Um, let's try that, let's do that. So let's go to there, let's cut that. So now we've got a, set, a nine second burn. It's gonna give us 700 meters per second. So we can actually really pull this thing down. We've got minutes and minutes and minutes and minutes and time we left. So we can just, uh, we can let this thing, can let this thing just fall a little bit until we're down to maybe a minute. There we go, we're starting to see the, the surface now below us. We've got a bit of the occlusionals, uh, not the occlusions, we've got close, close thing. We can see we get an intermittent signal. Right, um, it's realigning itself very nicely. We're ready that, shut that down because we're gonna to need to fire off this again. Of course, the problem here comes if this uh, if this doesn't activate, see that? I'm gonna put pin this here for now. Right, <clears throat> we're now a minute up. Now, normally you could actually go closer. I'm being very careful here, but I'm also aware of the fact we can get a, uh, a contract out of this if we hit, if we go fast enough. We're doing too slow now to actually get an, an impact contract. So what we wanna do now is I wanna kill basically 100% of this stage now is gonna go. And um, we're gonna wait until we're right on top of it. In fact, we're gonna wait until we're pretty much on it uh, before we start firing. In fact, I could probably wait until about five seconds or less. All right, so we've got activate engine is already, I'm ready to click that. So I'm gonna, we're gonna activate the RCS to settle the engine with the Z key uh, as thrust. Um, and I'm hoping there's enough uh, fuel in it to do this. We're gonna go down really, really close. This is very much a crasher stage. And of course, we could have done this all in one go if we'd actually done a few restarts, but there we go, that's on. And fire the engine. There we go, come on, slow me down, slow me down. Come on, 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 come on. Bit more. No, oh, what have we got, what have we got? Oh dear. Right. Well, at least this time we actually made it towards the moon. Um, yeah, I think uh, I was too under-focused with our first burn. I think I should have actually waited for a bit longer. I didn't take into account just how much thrust we had. And uh, the second burn, I waited too long because of that. So um, yeah, I think we're gonna need to do this again. I guess we're gonna need Explorer 3. All right. Well, I don't know how long this episode's been, but um, let's have a quick check and see how we're doing for science and stuff at the base. So yes, we didn't, I believe, yeah, we didn't actually complete any of the two contracts we could have had. We didn't complete Impactor because we weren't going fast enough and we didn't complete Landing because we were going too fast. So uh, that's a problem for us. Uh, funds are a little tight at the moment. We have a few vessels being built and I will probably put an Explorer in there. You will see we have a few satellites and things there. Um, I have hired a new astronaut, Eugene, Eugenie Lefe Lefebvre. 
it's French obviously, maximum courage, zero stupidity, very happy about you. I know somebody suggested hiring, uh, ooh, it's another mayor, uh, hiring one of the mayors that came up here, the male one, I think, I can't remember which, whether it was a pilot or something like that, to go with the, the other sisters, but ooh, you are a pilot, although you're not as good as your siblings. Um, so I'm not going to choose you uh, unless you come up again because that's quite interesting. So yeah, that's the, the crew we've got. Um, the reason for hiring uh, uh, Genie is because number one, I, I like to have three pilot pilots uh, just because it's worth having them. And we're now in this sort of space launch phase. Um, also, we've got some Icarus craft that I want to actually launch and we do have some missions for that. Um, Science wise, I'm sort of saving up for uh, Gemini. Where is Gemini? There we are, Gemini. Uh, so that's that's gonna be our next step. We could alternatively go for Soyuz, but I, I think we're gonna go American capsules on this one. So we're gonna go Gemini, and I need another five science for that, which we, we can get. We, you know, going to the moon, for example, will get us that. We probably actually got, I think we got a little bit of science from our last mission, in fact. Um, funds are okay. I would like to go into planetary. However, our electric situation is not good. This is one of the points that you will find, and particularly, and I'll show you the science. We are, we're currently at this sort of point. We've got, some level two, level one solar panels. We have some level one solar panels. Um, we I can actually buy that kind of. Um, <clears throat> we have some level one solar panels, things like that. But um, in reality, uh, we've still got a lot of electricity being used. So we've got, um, let's have a deep space. We've got, we really want to get this because it, it reduces the deep space avionics by 15% of power usage and their mass. So they start to get lighter. And then the next level up, does it again, we get another 15% less mass, 15% less power. So those two add up to give you quite a nice saving, which makes the solar panel difficulties a little easier. We do have communication that I think will work at the moment out to Mars, um, but it is, it's not brilliant. We'll probably talk about that in a Mars mission launch episode type thing. Um, and of course, Venus is, is better with solar panels because it's nearby and things like that. But Mars is pretty much the challenge for us at the moment. Um, we'll probably send, end up sending the same probe to both. I'll design basically a uniform probe. Um, I have put together from our test satellite in the previous episode, a, um, a basically a standard bus now for, for, sat for those satellites. I've increased the capacity for the, the payload and we'll use that. Um, but anyway, from me until next time, when we're, I'm not sure what we're gonna do, we'll probably go to the moon again, or we'll launch some satellites. I'm not entirely sure. We're gonna do some building work. Um, have a great one.